How's it going, everybody? Stubbs here from Retro Handhelds. We're just going to do a very quick uh, live look at the RG353PS. It just showed up from Ann Burnick, uh just a few hours ago. So I've already started the unboxing. You've all seen Ann Burnick unboxings so many times. Uh, so, I mean, all the standard things came in this one, came with a micro SD card, uh, charging cable, screen protector, and really everything we need here. So I've already booted it up. It has Emulation Station on here, version, I believe, 3.7. And we'll just take a quick peek. Let's see if we got anyone in here. <laughs> Cadence, how's it going? Yeah, it's no Data Frog. It's the, uh, the 353PS. So already I can tell you one thing that's awesome on this is that they fixed the speaker buzz. That's the very first thing that I checked out uh, as soon as I took this out of the box. So there was no speaker buzz uh, as far as the Wi-Fi goes. And there is a Wi-Fi chip in here and Bluetooth. So this is running Linux only, no Android. It looks like, uh, of course, two micro SD card slots, two downfiring speakers. Really actually nice and colorful ABXY buttons, very similar to what we see on the 405M. Uh, the D-pad actually, I'm not seeing issues with those diagonals, which is really, really nice. So I believe that might be fixed finally on the 353 line, which is great. I don't think these are hull sticks on the joysticks. Those are the standard ones we saw on the previous P. Um, one difference to note is I believe the L2 and R2 are a bit different. There's a really satisfying... I'm going to try to get up to the speaker here. Yeah, it feels really good. L2 and R2 feel very good. Uh, L1 and R1 as well. Nice and quiet. I like that. Uh, these are rubber membrane. All four of these buttons. Even the power button, which is interesting. I haven't seen that before. Of course, we got Wondrous One on here. MSX, PC Engine, NES, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Open Bore Ports, Settings, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, Game Gear, Dreamcast, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, PlayStation, PSP. Uh, again, let's check the version. So this has Emulation Station. Let's get this up to the camera. Uh, version 31, built uh, April 1st. So, I mean, this is fresh. This is a fresh handheld. I believe I'm the first on the team here at Retro Handhelds uh, to get this one. So I wanted to quickly hop on the live stream here and kind of show you all. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the live chat. I'm just going to take a look at that now. Retro Tech Dad Rob, what's going on, man? Hey, Matt. Yeah, you know what? The frosted, yeah, the frosted buttons here is not a bad look at all. I actually, when I first unboxed it, I was hoping it might be the uh, the DMG gray, but I was pleasantly surprised uh, that it's the transparent because it looks good with these skittle buttons, and you know you have this classic pads in the back here. Kind of do a slow showcase here. I like the look of the speakers, especially in this data, this cable here. That's kind of cool. Uh, it feels just like the P, maybe a little bit lighter, just slightly lighter. I don't have a P on me at the moment to compare it with. Uh, I have been playing a ton of the RK2023, though, and this is the direct comparison. The performance in this seems to mimic the 2023 pretty damn close, and this should be coming in just above that price point so having the additional wi-fi though is going to be great and i did confirm that this does have wi-fi it is in here right there and let's can let's set it up just just in case do this off camera though 
How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, price, it should be under 100 bucks. I don't know the exact price. We're probably going to see this drop uh, in the next day or so. The, usually when I have these show up on my doorstep, uh, there's a launch imminent. So uh, follow the link in the description. It should be at the Embernic site uh, very shortly for the first 48 hours. I'm going to guess that it's going to be $10 less. I'm going to guess it's going to be around 80 to $85 for the first 48 hours, and I'm probably going to be in the $90 price range. I could be wrong, but... Uh, Historically, that's what we're looking at. Love you too, Rob, so much. Uh, the Wi-Fi enabled Mark III. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pride Tunes, yep. I agree. Uh, Joe, yeah, it is pretty comfy, actually. So, I mean, if you've had the, the 353P, it's going to be similar. But again, it seems just a little bit lighter to me. I'm just going to set up my network real quick. I also have a I have my son, my one and a half year old son who's behind me destroying the room, so I might uh, interrupt this broadcast in a moment. But uh, we'll see. Yep. Okay. So it's connected to network. Let's check for any updates. No updates available. Let's get that centered a bit. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is a 403 screen. If you want me to read off specs really quick, surely, let's just pull that up on the screen here. All right, so here's the uh, the launch video for it. I really love that DMG. I'm gonna probably buy that one. That's that's still my favorite. I that purple. Yeah, that's that's gonna look awesome with some mods. So we got the thirty five sixty six in here, of course. Let's turn off this crazy crazy background music. Uh, it does have rumble, HDMI out, yep, confirmed. Uh, it's going to handle all these systems that's showing fairly decently. If you've messed around with any RK3566 devices, you're going to kind of understand what you're getting here. Uh, but this is definitely so far performing better than the than the Pauketty X55, I'm happy to say. And uh, I've only really been testing out PSP because that's been my main... Uh, testing point for the, this line of devices. If we can run like flat out, if we can run a Ridge Racer at decent frame rates, uh, we do get a few drops, uh, as you'll see in a minute when I show off that game. But uh, so far, so good. So yeah, we got that 3.5 inch screen, uh, OCA laminated. Uh, this has one gig of RAM compared to the uh, the original P, which had two gigs. So there is a difference there. Uh, there was touch screen on the original P, and it also had Android. So that's another difference. But beyond that. Uh, 3,500 milliamp hour battery, which, let's see, does let's look at the P. Does that match up? Yep, the same battery as the P. Uh, yeah, everything else appears to be the same. Ergonomics feel, maybe I'm crazy, but just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Mm. Dookly dookly. Get some better lighting in here is what we need to do. Get some get some fancy background music. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if we can get this at the price point of, I want to say 70 to $75, that's ridiculous. Okay, this thing, it feels great. I mean, it looks like an SNES controller. So far, I am a fan. Let's play some games. Uh, leave a comment in chat if there's one you want to see in particular. Let's do some N64. I 
Uh, the screen is nice and bright, actually running it at 50% brightness right now. Might adjust that in a minute. Ooh, ah, let's see. And Bernick is smart to leave off the Mar most of the Mario games. Oh, I don't know. Let's do Star Fox. Ah, Perfect Dark. Okay, we'll try that next. I'm always I'm always nervous to do Perfect Dark. Yeah, Cadence. The uh, the performance is going to be nearly identical to the P, except for the RAM is half, so one gig versus two gigs in the original. Uh, take that for what you will. It's not going to affect it that much, uh, but we will uh, we'll see. So stay tuned for the Zoo review of this. Uh, Zoo's going to dive in a bit more and do one of his classic uh, reviews. Aish is going to do some deeper videos as well. I'm really going to just do this kind of initial live stream here just to get some quick thoughts out. Illusions. <laughs> yeah, Perfect Dark is tough, maybe with these controls. But no, I mean, the joysticks, if you if you played with the 353P, it's pretty much the same deal here. I like the look of the gray. I like the gray on these, though. Don't you? It kind of looks good against that transparent. And again, the D-pad, I'm not feeling those uh, messed up diagonals. So this feels very accurate here. Yeah, no Android. Do a little fast forward. No touchscreen, that's true. It's funny, it has this uh, dot matrix with stereo sound for people nostalgic for the Game Boy, although it's emulating uh, an SNES controller, so that's, that's kind of funny. Get our frame counter on here. Line that up a bit. Is Linux faster? I mean, that's kind of... Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to even get into that argument today. Uh, it, some emulators, yeah. Some emulators, maybe Linux is a bit more optimized. Uh, some emulators, though, Android is. N64 classically is going to run better on Android. So you all get to see me play this uh, live. I am notoriously awful at playing video games while doing voiceover and while trying to manage a live stream. So that's... Please accept my shortcomings. Let's do a barrel roll. Uh, yeah, so far we're seeing 60 FPS though in Star Fox. No surprises there. Although I had to try it anyways because the Pow Kitty X55. Uh, struggles a bit same chipset that's on the same chipset with more ram i don't we'll get there right we'll get some software optimizations uh analog l2r2 you know what it feels it feels like an analog l2r2 but i do not know yet it definitely and again let me do this in front of the microphone Yeah, we'll try a more demanding one here. You know what, let's move it up right on up to PSP. Screen is nice and, and vibrant. I believe it's the same screen from the P. In which case, I mean, that's a nice screen. 
Maybe let's do do Ridge Racer. Yeah, e exact same size as the 353P. Tune says basically you'll be able to play most PSP and N64 games, some Dreamcast, maybe a decent amount of Sega Saturn emulation. You know what? Saturn definitely is a possibility here. Um, everything else you said, yep, we should see no real issue. We're not going to get perfect emulation out of PSP or Dreamcast, uh, no matter how much tweaking we do. Some games are just going to be dropping frames. Oh, thank you, buddy. You want to say hi to my internet friends? Here's little stubs. He's having his crack. Yeah, I say hi. Yeah. Do you, are you ready to play with retro handhelds? Yeah, you are. Okay. Um, do you want to play with your retro chicken right now? Yeah, that's what you need. We need we need to get him the retro chicken. This is very very important. Pick our name, start, good to go. Let's pull out my... This little guy loves the retro chicken. If you've never seen the retro chicken, oh man, you're missing out. Yeah, only the cool kids play with this one. Yeah, this is, I'd almost buy this over the 353P or the PS. I mean, it has a version of Mario, except it's called JJ the Chicken. Let's see. Uh, this is now a uh, chicken live stream. Sorry, Dad's playing this now. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Good job. Oh, you left your rubber ducky and your croissant on my keyboard. Oh no, kid. Oh no, kid. Kids are messy. It's okay. Now, let's play some Ridge Racer. frame counter on we don't we don't PPSSPP one thing we used to do on this channel a lot is see how fast we could say PPSSPP so say it 10 times fast PPSSPP 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 oh no how do we get to the how do we get to the uh the options when we're in Linux I should know this by now My nerd cred is dropping by the second. Oh no. You know what, this is a great opportunity to uh, turn up our brightness. Let's see how bright this gets. So there we are in max brightness. And here we are on the dimmest. It gets nice and dim. Right around 60 might work for us today. Okay, let's get back into Ridge Racer. Start and select is probably a safe bet. Nope, that quits. All 
seconds. Do some teching. This one should give us some slowdown. I didn't, I didn't notice slowdown in Ridge Racer. Oh, I should also say it came with a case. So it came with a matching case this time, which is really cool. There, put the chicken handheld in there. Yeah, screen is very crisp. No complaints there at all. All right, here we go. Here's here's some slowdown in PPS's PP. As expected, uh, I do expect us to get better performance, of course, when we get some custom firmware on this bad boy. Uh, I want to see some some unofficial OS. I want to see some Jealous. I want to see Garlic OS, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, the big chin. Yeah, <laughs> cranky Russ. Yeah, Russ, if you're on the live stream... Let me know what you think of the chin on this thing. J Lash, you want? Yeah, I think this is a good one. I think if it's, I think if the price is right, which I, so sorry, I don't have the price yet. I've been asking. Uh, all I know is it's under a hundred dollars, even less the first forty-eight hours. So. There might not be a way to get into the menu for PPSS PP on here. I am just failing at finding that. Uh, a little bit of slowdown in Tekken, to be expected. Mainly, uh, it just feels really good. Let's do something that might have rumble in it. So let's do some PlayStation. maybe some Crash Team Racing, which is my favorite racing game for PlayStation, at least lately. Yeah, so this one is touchscreen if you buy the P, the original 353P model. I am impatient. A little bit. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get out. Sure. Yes. 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 Blah, 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 Thank you. At least we're in RetroArch now, so we can turn on the... Frame counter, there we go. Not that we're gonna see any dips in PS1, but again, like on the, the uh, X55, you never know what you're gonna get until you try. I don't wanna collect keys. This is crazy. Oh, I just wanna play a quick game. I should've gone to arcade mode. Now I gotta search out place that I can get into. Here we go. Here? Eh, maybe? Eh? Maybe? Hmm? No? No. We 
got to have at least completed one race to get in that one. Oh, no. 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 I promise the controls are good, and I'm just bad. Yeah, GameCube, that's not something I'm going to try right now. On this chipset, I really wouldn't I really wouldn't bother. I wouldn't bother with Switch. I wouldn't bother with GameCube or PS2 or 3DS. Now, they run kind of, um, but they're not impressive. Uh, and then again, because we don't have Android on this model, they're not actually going to run at all. Let me correct myself. On the 353P, they run kind of a little bit. And you know, I really wouldn't run DS on here either. I would actually... <laughs> can't believe I'm about to say this, but if you're into Nintendo DS lately in, the, in our Discord community, all we've been talking about is the Microsoft Surface Duo. Surface Duo 1, Surface Duo 2. Mainly the Surface Duo 1 is a hell of a bargain. And uh, pair that with the rig Nacon MGX controller. And you're going to have yourself a stew going, all right? That's going to be great. You're going to have separate dual screens. You're going to have a screen for top and bottom for true DS emulation. Looks great. Sounds great. Feels good. It's like the two were made for each other. So says, for instance... Uh, Calkeg in our community and uh, I do recommend that now some people will say well get the Retroid Pocket Flip yeah well the Flip is great um, but it doesn't have that bottom screen same thing with GPDXD same thing with the X18S we don't have a bottom screen and so why not just go all the way and get yourself an actual dual screen device Um, but, I mean, some DS games are going to be serviceable on this. You're going to see games like Castlevania. Any games that... Uh, any games that don't rely on having a second screen, or you can toggle between them here and there, uh, that's, that's going to be playable. You can patch up maybe Zelda Spirit Tracks uh, so that you don't need to use the touchscreen. And while you can use the stylus or the virtual stylus with the uh, right stick here, it's just not ideal. Just, just get a Surface Duo. <laughs> I can't believe this is all Rob's fault. This is all Retro Tech Dad's fault. Um, but he's making a video to show you how to set that up. So uh, <laughs> definitely pick one of those up. I mean, they're like two hundred and sixty bucks on Amazon, new it's locked to AT&T, but you're not going to use it as a phone. You're going to use it to play Nintendo DS games. You're going to use it to play uh, Pokemon games with uh, OLED, an OLED screen, and a be beautiful, crisp, vibrant device. Okay, let's play something else. <laughs> Some people have... <laughs> Caden says... Uh, for DS, just get a DS. Now that's a controversial. That's a controversial uh, statement. A, a DS, play DS games on an actual DS? No, that screen is no good though. It's like a TFT screen. There's maybe some IPS. We have this argument all the time. In our community it goes back and forth and back and forth. Let's play some DS. Speaking of though, let's see how much we can do DS, and then let's do Dreamcast, and then we'll call it a day on this live stream. I got stuff to do, man. I gotta change it, at least one diaper by now. do some Ben 10 Galactic Racing. Ben 10 is not a show I ever watched growing up. I have no nostalgia for it, but I love the video games. Like every single one I've played. I don't care for every system. I think Ben 10 is awesome. And I should probably watch this cartoon at some point. All right, so as you can see here, you have some different options. You can configure the screen to have both. You can have just the bottom or just the top. So we're going to use the virtual stylus here, put in our name that I can't see what I'm 
typing. Okay, there we go. My name is F for fun. Yeah, JLS, you gotta win the, uh, the IPS lottery, it's true. Do a quick race this time. Yeah, this is feeling good. I can feel that frame skip is on. Uh, maybe frame skip one. And there's another issue right now where it is. Oh wait. I wonder if the I wonder if L2 is analog because I'm barely touching L2 and it's toggling uh, to the back view there. Let's let's make sure I'm not touching anything. Hopefully it's not some weird bug. That. Hmm. DS on uh, Nintendo DS and Linux is always a pain for me to get set up correctly. It just never quite functions how I want it to. And there's no exception here. So for some reason, it's toggling between my back camera and I'm not touching anything. I promise. So. It's not doing it now, though. What is that? Once again, the D-pad feels awesome on this. This is the best 353 D-pad I've felt yet from the 353V, the 353P, the 353M uh, to the 353PS here. This D-pad is the best so far. Beats the 35XX D-pad. Don't have to open it up and put that silly tape mod in uh, where you get your electrical tape to try to fix the diagonals. Yeah, so it's still doing that issue. So while DS seems to run fine, and I bet we could turn frame skip off here, uh, it's 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 wonky, and we're gonna need some custom firmware. Let's get out of here. Thanks, Drastic. Lastly, we're gonna end things with uh, Dreamcast. See, there's there's the retro tech dad, shilling shilling the uh, Surface Duo in chat. What are we gonna do with that guy? Eight five five in the Duo one, eight 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 in the Duo two. I mean, that's not bad. That's value. Don't buy it. But if you do, come talk to us in the Discord because we have a nerd chat going right now that's going pretty deep. What do we want to do here? Everybody's favorite benchmarking game, Sonic 2? No. We're gonna we're gonna say no. We're gonna do Power Stone. There's no duo three. No, Microsoft, I think, did the duo two and said, oh, this isn't selling. This isn't gonna work. Come on, camera. And uh, they gave up. And strangely enough, the Duo 2 goes for outrageous sums of money. Just, I mean, $600 plus. And uh, the Duo 1, you can get around 265 What else we got here? Tonham. Yep, that was a Ben 10 racing game. It's true. Cadence, okay, fight me. Are we still talking about Nintendo DS? You know what? The th I'll, I'll say this. The 3DS, probably the best device to play the 3DS on currently is still a 3DS. But, I mean, maybe the Duo 2 is the best device to play it on. We're going to find out. That's that's another video coming to the channel here. So how about them apples? Hey, speaking about apples, 
Uh, yeah, speaking about apples, nothing to do with apples, but we do have merch. So go to our merch shop, uh, retrohandhelds.myspreadshop.com. It's right below this video. There's clickable buttons now. So we have different shirts and hats, and uh, we even have uh, possibly gnomes soon. You know, that guy. Um, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. There's like sales all the, all the time supports the channel and our ridiculous shenanigans, shenanigans. You know, this, this live stream is fine. Me yammering away while I half-heartedly play these games is, is totally fine. I would stick around for, uh, the zoo review. I'm looking forward to watching that myself. That'll be a lot of fun. People have been saying he's the Norm MacDonald of reviewers on YouTube, and I would agree. He's also a, a problem, but um, we haven't found a way to defeat him yet. So till then, enjoy his content. This is running great, by the way. Okay, let's get the, let's get the frame counter on. So yeah, again, just wanted to show you guys a quick look, fresh out of the box experience with the uh, 353PS. This is, Power Stone 2 is kind of like a 3D Smash Brothers a bit. Now we're, now we're fighting while we're dropping. Let's get this detail up close. Yeah, the uh, I would say the stock Dreamcast is leagues, leagues better than the uh, Paukity X55 right out of the gate. I mean, this is really, it, we're hitting 60 FPS, really nice. Let's try another game. Hey, Jeff. Uh, JLash, you want to know when we can order? I would love to know that, too. Usually, uh, and Bernick leaves that in their their promo video, their official promo video, and I did not see a release date in there. I am just ballparking and saying that it's going to be probably this week or weekend. Um, but I will let you guys know as soon as I find out. What's a tougher-to-run Dreamcast game? I want to say, say Sonic Adventure 2, that first level. As soon as we get around the bend, there's usually slow down right when we're going down that big hill in the San Francisco level. The gradient color option on the 280M. Yeah, it'd be awesome to have that gradient come back around and come back in style. We're going to have to trick this bad boy out with mods, though. I mean, Sakura mods, uh, RetroGame.Evo mods. I cannot wait for the ridiculousness. So far, I am a fan of this over the, the 353P, which makes sense because I was also a fan of the 353VS instead of the 353V. I think the value in this is awesome. Uh, I think that you're getting a lot for your money. Even if it's up to $100, I so far, I would recommend this. You really know what you're getting. This is a tried and true chipset. Screen protector went on pretty easy. I like that they still have the headphone jack down there. Oh, right. Yeah, JLS, you bring up a great point. So the, the Labor Day, uh, the Chinese holiday is this week, so we might not see this till after the weekend. It's possible. But I'm guessing the other reviewers are going to be having this drop in their hands in the next uh, day. So you're going to see a lot more content all over YouTube. In no time flat. Uh, so far, yeah, so far again, no slowdown in this one. Ah, turn on the frame counter as I die. Ugh. 
Okay, we are getting some frame drops here. Uh, vibration is working, I can tell you that. The rumble is working great, that feels good. Getting a little slow down here. Not really noticeable, I'm just seeing it visually on the counter. But it doesn't feel slow. Follow me. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. You've seen enough of this, right? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. The Ambernic RG 353PS. We get a lot of handhelds from Ambernic. Uh, they release very often, as you know. As soon as you get used to one uh, being here, another one comes out two weeks later, or maybe a month later, but it's a rapid product cycle, and it's hard to keep up. So it's kind of like, I would say don't focus so much about you know which one has the best performance necessarily it's really going to be about i think what has the right ergonomics for you what feels right maybe the screen uh, if you're playing in bed at night which for me that's the main time i really play retro games i want the dimmest screen possible i really don't want uh, to have an led bright light like that so i might mod this to reduce that and uh, i do like that the screen gets nice and dim though that's really nice and i just I appreciate that the buttons are quiet. All of the buttons on here are rubber membrane feeling. They are all quiet. You got your rubber ducky there. You didn't. Yeah, I think he beat the retro chicken. Oh, good job. Good, good job, kid. Yeah. Tut tut. I'm good. I don't need a croissant right now. I'm playing. I'm playing with my with my retro handheld. Uh, so. This is, again, yeah, I appreciate that it's quiet, so I think this is going to be a great handheld to play in bed to not wake my family up, and I'm stoked for that. Let's do a quick comparison, though. I think I have my data frog around here. You also might notice that I'm not in my usual studio right now, and I'm in my wife's office. Because this showed up at the end of my work day, and I said, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to throw on the the live setup here and we're just gonna we're just gonna chat about it so here is another snes inspired handheld called the data frog sf 2000 this thing is wonderful and it's 20 dollars there's a little bit of screen tearing which makes it not as wonderful but there's custom firmware being built for it so we might get that fixed and surprisingly it has an ips screen and even against the 353 ps it does not look too bad right I'm ridiculously stoked on this. It's funny because Super Nintendo doesn't run perfectly on it, but Mega Drive and Genesis does. So this is an awesome $20 Genesis handheld. I mean, Super Nintendo runs most games just fine, but it even has an analog stick. Doesn't click, but it feels good. So I would say if you want to start out retro handhelds, a $20 device like this with awesome feeling face buttons you really can't go wrong it feels like a snes controller i mean this does too it's just bigger so if you want to see kind of this has a big bump out because it has a rechargeable battery inside and a single speaker despite it looking like there's two there's only one uh just l1 and r1 not l2 r2 The width is about the same. The PS is a little bit wider. Definitely the Data Frog is a bit thicker up in the back there. Do some zombies ate my neighbors, huh? Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the frog. Uh, and I'm a fan of this. So I think, but again, this is going to be closer to the hundred dollar price point it might be or you might we might see 75 bucks as a best case scenario i doubt we'd go i, I doubt we're gonna see it below that let me just let me just pull up both games here so 
let's do we have Genesis right no one complaint I always have about these handhelds is that when they include stock games like this which is totally you know gray area bad what have you they include it in this numbered list and the numbered list is makes it really tough to find what you're looking for it's not alphabetical usually it is numbered in an order that only uh cheat that only cheeto steve probably understands i have some updates on that by the way i don't want to talk about it right now though i just want zombies eat my neighbors Why is it organized like this? Why? Every time. I appreciate there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of games. And there's probably a search feature that I could pull up. I bet you. Aha. Aha. Yeah. There we go. Let's do Zom. Aha. Look at that. We figured it out. We got there. Go us. Damn you, Cheeto Steve. Did we just line it up at the same time on both? <laughs> I can't believe it. my headphones. Those are my headphones, man. Uh, I actually have the data frog brightness up a lot higher. So if we were to match brightness, uh, not that much different. Only thing is we are getting some screen tearing up here, but you don't notice it on games like this so much. It's going to be a closer brightness setting now. I mean, obviously the 353 PS screen is better for sure, but it, it's like for 20 bucks, I don't know if it's that much different, which is kind of cool. Good things are happening in this hobby. All right, enough, enough of this, enough of the screen comparison stuff, all that stuff. Get out of here, you. So, what do you guys think? What do you, what do you think about the uh, the 353 PS? Is this one that you want to go for? Is this one you're interested in? Uh, we will be providing up to date coverage on it as much as we can find out. Yeah, we do need Embernic to make a Genesis controller version of, of this. I think this is a cool chipset, and uh, so far I'm really a fan. But that's going to wrap it us wrap it up for us today, everybody. Uh, please do like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying what you see here. Tell your friends. Uh, we are building this uh, YouTube channel out more and more. Uh, our main thing we do is in our Discord, though, so that's really where the party is. Uh, we do games of the month. We have 
uh, giveaways. Uh, we got uh, all sorts of fun discussions, chat, uh, custom firmware. A lot of up-to-date news is happening live in the Discord pretty much 24-7. So that's a place I do recommend. Uh, other than that, stick around for some more videos. Feel free to click in some of the options that you see in the corner of the screen here uh, once I add those in. Uh, but this has been Stubbs from Retro Handhelds, and uh, I will see you on the next. Take care of your handhelds, everybody, and take care of each other. Okay, bye.